Hello, we're here in Worcester at the kind of headquarters distribution centre for a product called uh, Magic Whiteboard. You may have seen uh, recently on Dragon's Den. I'm here with founder uh, Neil Westwood. So, Neil, how are you? Oh, very well, thank you. Thanks <laughs> Good. for coming. Oh, no, no problem. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm well aware of the product and thousands of people are because you've been very, very successful. Yeah. Um, but some people might not know what it is. Could you briefly explain what Magic Whiteboard does? Yeah, well... Magic whiteboard, you know, it allows you to create a whiteboard, you know, from a roll. Yeah. So that's how it how it comes there. And simply, you just tear it off the roll, yeah. stick it on, on on the wall, and it sticks using static. Then you write on it, and then you and just you it erase it. You know, Genius. Simple, just, you know, just a simple idea. Yeah, so why hasn't that idea been done before then? Why has it taken into, up till now for you, for, for somebody to come up with that idea, do you think? I don't know, but I, I just worked as a trainer in the hospital, so I used to have to carry, like, the flip chart stand, mm. which was a, you know, a pain, it was cumbersome, it was heavy. And then I thought, gosh, what, you know, eventually we thought, oh, wouldn't it be a great idea, you know, to have it on a, yeah. on a roll, really? Yeah. So how did that, I mean, did you did you notice a material just lying around that you thought, oh, wow, that sticks to that for some reason? Or did, was it like a painful kind of months no. and months of progression? We did, um, once we got thought about the role idea based mm. on cling film, that sort right. of thing, we, I then did a bit of research on the internet mm. and um, found a manufacturer who, who could uh, sort of make it, um, you know, and, you know, they... You know, they had this static fill. Yeah. And then that's it sort of went from there really. Right. So we bought we bought some, you know, very, you know, rough prototype product, uh, you know, plain box, mm. you know, and then we started selling it ourselves online, you know, right. but we created the brand, you know, Magic Whiteboard, you know, registered the web page, you know, yeah. as most businesses start up. And then we tried the market to see if it was gonna sell or not. Mm. I mean, you say you, 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 read, you did the brand and everything like that and put the website. Was that quite an easy process for you guys or did you have to outsource and was it... Uh... Yeah, we, um, I didn't have those skills, so we mm. basically paid for people to yeah. do that. So, you know, that probably cost about five grand to get the web page done and all the leaflets. Right. And was that before before investment, obviously, for yes. uh, Dragon's Den? Yes, so, so I'm... I'm using my savings right okay yeah so that's how you read because that's obviously a big a big deal for for small companies and especially entrepreneurs who don't have the most money just coming in yeah um so you know you have to get work with what you've got i actually I sold some shares that i had um you know i just thought oh, they're not doing anything you know mm. we'll just sell them get a bit of cash and we'll try running a business and this was with who's your business partner at the time my wife your wife okay Laura. how did that dynamic work yeah, really well, because yeah. I'm like the sort of, you know, enthusiastic one, prepared to take a risk, and mm. Laura's, you know, more sensible, she's the planner, right. you know, thinks it through a little yeah. bit more, so it acts as a, a good balance, actually. Yeah, so where do you think you'd be now um, without that investment? Because you got investment from Theo and Deborah. Yeah, we've got 100,000. Mm. Um, without them, I think we would have still grown um, but not as quickly. Mm. So it has definitely helped going with Theo because he got into 240 Ryman straight away. Yeah. And I now know, because we've got it into Staples and Office Depot, I now know how difficult it is to get into big retailers like that. So it was actually a lot of value from Theo. And I didn't realise at the time, but, you know, it... it it took like 18 months to get it into Staples. Right. And it's now one of their best selling products. And that was with Theo on board. And that was with Theo on board. I mean, and it still took that long. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's a huge thing. I mean, people with a product out there, um, or even just an idea, that will be one of the major hurdles. Would you agree? Yeah. It's one of the most difficult things to do. Yeah. That, you know, it's easy in some respects to get the product, but it's the sales, the distribution. And, you know, that's the tricky element. So so what would your be... You said it was, it was really, really tough on that 18 months getting into Staples. What's your advice for people trying to do the same thing? Did you make... You must have made a load of mistakes. And... Yeah. Well, you, you try all the normal routes. So you obviously can't... First thing is to try and contact the buyer. Um, but that can be quite difficult because they're busy people, you know. Um, you know, they've got thousands of products that they're looking after. 
you know, why should they take your product? You know, why take something out the range that's selling and put yours in? You know, it's mm. a risk for them. Um, you know, especially when the market is, you know, in so-called sort of recession, you know, it's, it's not a great time to be trying to persuade buyers, but yeah. really you have to be persistent. And, you know, we email, phone calls, you know, a, a lot of your emails, to be frank, just get ignored mm. and they don't reply to your phone calls. Mm. In the end, what we did, which was very creative, and I'd encourage any entrepreneur to do this, we took out a billboard outside the front of Staples uh, that said Magic Whiteboard. And after two weeks, the managing director was sick of driving past it. And he actually phoned me up and said, you cheeky bugger, you can uh, come in now. Oh, that's a great so idea. that was the thing that, you know, oh, so it's that's that the reason that got it in. But, you know, so you have to be persistent mm. and, you know, creative, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, um... So now you are in Staples and you're doing very well and you're growing very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned on your website that one of the reasons you were keen to get Theo in, on board and Deborah was because you knew that would help you grow very, very quickly. Because yeah. like you said, you got into all those Ryman's very, yeah. um, very quickly. So what are the challenges then with, with growing so fast? Because a lot of people will think, well, it's all good growing really, no, really quickly, no. but it's not, of course, is it? It's actually quite stressful, you know, because um, you, you're unsure what the demand is for your product. Mm. So you've got all sorts of stock issues. You know, we were literally running our business from home. And then the day that I had uh, a lorry, those massive Tesco lorries that you see coming down the motorway, full of magic whiteboard turning up at my house, I knew we had to get a warehouse, yeah. you know. So those are the issues you face. We've got like the neighbors going mad because, you know, we're blocking the drive and everything from yeah. where we live in the cul-de-sac you know so you know there's cash flow issues you know stock issues you also have issues regarding um you know the packaging and the shape of the box you know for all these different retailers Mm. you know you need to try and reduce the variation in the process as as much as you can and have a standard product You, you as soon as you start going off track you know, you start to waste money and lose money. Because that's where the wheels will come off an entrepreneur in many ways, because once the idea is, is all suited to entrepreneurialism and everything and, and that drive to make it happen, but once things start getting really going, yeah. it's all about organisation and staying on top of things. Yeah, it's the day-to-day, you know, the consistency, mm. the reliability, meeting your deliveries, you know, you've got to get your orders out yeah. there yeah. and the, uh, uh, the, to the customer when they want it, you Absolutely. know, on pallets and it, it'll go pear-shaped if you miss a delivery you know they'll lose confidence mm. you know they won't trust you mm. you know so we pride ourselves on that and that's why we we based ourselves next to a haulage company so we offer like next day delivery even for pallets and like you know our retailers can't believe we can do that because yeah. no one else can but that's it's a strategic decision to be based here yeah yeah because you're based right next i mean just across the road you have um do you have a little office above yeah. that kind of workspace and here we're in in the middle of distribution so that's where you can offer that yeah. but of course with expansion and of course with offering all these different services comes different products and you have yeah. like a range here now yeah. you've developed um black what's this Blackout Blind, yeah. that's the name. How did this come about? And... Well, you know, it's a, it's a, slightly, it's a, a similar product to Magic Whiteboard, but for a totally different use. And what we discovered, and it's a really important lesson for any entrepreneur or someone setting up a business, you need to listen to your customers. So we have the whiteboard, which you've seen there, mm. and this is basically a black version, which is a slightly thicker, but sticks to windows instead. Yeah, so we've got that, yeah. We've yeah. stuck this to the wall, but that sticks to your window, blacks out all the light. So it's a totally different market, that's the baby mm. market. Mm. But loads of parents, mums, um, grandparents, people who are going on holiday, want a quick temporary blackout solution. You know, and we sold like four hundred and fifty thousand pounds worth of those last last year. Just from adapting Just from something adapting you already have, yeah. A yeah. similar product. Well, um, it's interesting that you've gone into all these different facets um, of, of of retail, and now you're in publishing and all sorts of yeah, things. Yeah, I think cool. that's what you know. That's what you see where the demand is in the market, and mm. you go. And I know it seems like that all these are a bit random, 
Um, but you know, you go to where the demand and the money is really. Yeah, I think that's quite tip and important for anyone to, to uh, remember. Uh, one more question about uh, your magic whiteboards. Are they in any way magic? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> they, People do say that. <laughs> do they, they buy it thinking it's magic. Is that, is that your they secret? It, they your do marketing how secret. It sticks, but, uh, <laughs> how does it stick then? Just clear it up for us. It's just static. static electricity. Easy. It's quite um, simple, really. You've taken the magic out of it for me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much for joining us, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.